Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax, it's Panhandle Outdoors. Hey, good morning and welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Bill Allen sitting in for Winston Chester this morning. I have a semi-special guest with me. And uh, we're going to jump right into the weather. Uh, today is Tuesday, November the 3rd. And if I'm not mistaken, if you haven't voted yet, today is the day to do it. Uh, be sure that you get out and exercise your right to do that. Only if you're voting the right way. But no, anyway, uh, let's look at today's high is going to be about 68 with a low of 48 tonight, and we're looking at a north-northeast wind at about 10 to 12 miles an hour. So, you know, I'm really enjoying this, this cooler weather. Uh, high, uh, low tide is going to be around 840 this morning with a high tide tonight about 1115. Water temperature, average water temperature in Panama City now is about 78 degrees. So it's cooled down some. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, everybody's adjusting to the, to the time change. So I want to throw in the fact that sunrise is now about 558. And of course, sunset is 454, which is going to significantly cut your afternoon fishing in, or mine. But... Uh, the illumination from the moon is about 98% right now. So if, you know, this time of year with, with this weather and the flounder migration, I know Winston talked about that the other day, and a big moon like this, it'd uh, be a great time to get out and take advantage of that. And, you know, a little bit of north wind, which is going to subside, you know, during the... Uh, you know, during the evening, I hope, but of course, check as always. Uh, looking at uh, peak times today from 2.04 p.m. to 4.04 p.m. So right before it starts getting dark should be an excellent time to be out there. Um, Apalachicola River at Blunstown is uh, 11 and a half feet. And it's holding steady for the next two or three days. We're kind of still waiting to see what kind of influence we're going to have from this last little hurricane that came through. Um, Choctatchee and Caraville is eight feet, and it's got a kind of a steady fall to it for the next two or three days. So, all right, let's go ahead and take this first break. We'll come right back. Hey, welcome back. You'll recognize this familiar face, Mr. Greg Brandicki, that's joined us this morning. How you doing, man? Good morning, Bill. Good. Bill, I'm doing all right. All right. We've uh, had some recent uh, success that we're going to talk about and also talk about this weather being a little bit cooler. But first, I've got some pictures that I'm going to share with you in a couple little short clips of my recent trip with my, my sons, my grandson, my brother-in-law to... Uh, our fall trip to North Carolina, uh, our fly fishing trip, and uh, you know we ran into the backside of Sally up there and got rained on uh, kind of steadily for about four days. So we had to work our way around, deal with some water getting rougher and not rougher, but higher and faster and dirty. And when you're walking rocks that are already slick and swift water, it makes it a little bit challenging, so we had to kind of, we had to kind of fish it a, a little bit differently. You couldn't uh, the first day that we got to fish, uh, the Friday, uh, that was the we got there on Thursday afternoon, set up the camp, and uh, you know we fished. Uh, Friday was a good day, and then the rain started coming in, and after that. You know, we kind of had to pick our places. That water got higher and what got dirtier. So, you know, we had to go places in the stream where we just go get in and go for a little bit where we knew it would be a little bit shallower, maybe, you know, able to fish it because fishing long stretches uh, was not going to happen for me. But even Dalton, who gets around extremely well up there, uh, it was difficult for you know, for him to do, we, he tried to fish a couple of long stretches and it was kind of tough. He was managed to do it. 
So this first picture, you can see some of these, and they'll be up or, or the, the kind of haul that first morning that we got. And you see some nice browns, a couple of rainbows in there, and brook trout, but uh, it's a pretty decent sized fish that we had in there. And then uh, you got one of uh, Dalton there down by the stream where we camped at, where we were cleaning these fish, where they were cleaning these fish. And then uh, that's my brother-in-law Cliff with Dalton, uh, you know, again, down there cleaning the fish. This. Uh, this elaborate tarp setup is the thing that saved us. You know, we've got a, uh, I believe that gray tarp is a 20 by 30, and we've, we've kind of got a system where we can get that stretched out pretty good, and uh, it makes a big difference instead of sitting inside a tent the whole time, mm. being able, we could cook under that, you know, be able to sit out and fellowship and that kind of thing, so we did have some, uh, some refuge from, from the rain. Um, and then looking over there, that's my, my grandson and Dalton down there. They're starting to clean uh, those fish from the first day. That may be the second day, that uh, the haul that we got right there. Um, uh, that's my brother-in-law, Cliff, with a real nice trout that uh, we pulled out in one of our uh, uh, hopping adventures going from kind of place to place to fish out an area. And we actually did very well, you know. We we caught some really nice fish, and uh, we do the same thing up there. When we catch enough fish to eat one night, then we release the rest of them. We don't even take the creels with us. So, you know, that first day or so with just a limited number of us up there this time, we had enough fish. So, you know, the rest of the fish we caught, we released, regardless of the size. Uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot of video or pictures because it was, it was limited. So anyway, a quick glimpse into our trip and uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to come right back and we're going to get into uh, what we've done here and what we're looking forward to with this cooler weather that we've got. So let's, let's go ahead and take this break and pay the bills and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. So let's go from the mountains to the bay. And uh, what was it, Friday before last? The last time we got out? It was, wasn't it last Friday? That might have been last Friday. I, I, yeah. I get lost now. We but uh, that's too far back. Uh, we wound up having a good day. Yeah. Started slow. Very slow. Just, uh, we, we, we had trouble locating them. We went to where we thought they would be, and we worked the area, had a few blow-ups. You know, the water's still dirty from the, from the storms that we've had, but it was cleaner in the area that we were in, which flushes pretty well. They should have been there. Every, all the conditions were just right for them to be there. The water was moving enough and all that. And for whatever reason, that's why they call it fishing. You know, they don't call it catching. So we worked it really hard and um, said, well, maybe we need to move. We were actually in the marsh. So maybe we need to move outside because for some reason they're not inside. And we got out there. Windy, a little bit windy. And it was windy. So that's why we were kind of protected in there. So it was kind of the convenient place to fish. But as it usually goes, the crappier the weather, the better that we do. Yes. And I don't know <laughs> if it's whatever the, you know, we just deal with the conditions. So we go outside, and I'm telling you, we were fishing for several hours that day and did not see one boat. Yeah. You know, well, and once we found them. Nobody I mean, we, else was dumb enough to be out there. Yeah, and, but but you know what? Um, it really was hot for a while. And uh, we caught some great redfish and great trout and uh, had a very large time. Yeah, we did. We started to actually take our own advice. You know, we were in there where we thought they would be uh, based on the tide and, and the conditions we, we, where we thought they would be where we wanted them to be, fishing what we wanted to fish, 
at two or three different things that they just weren't there. You know, we fished for an hour and a half, two hours, worked our way through and fished every you know, conceivable point, water moving all over the place, mm -hmm. good water, and couldn't buy one. No. Could not buy one. So we get outside where that wind, you know, is coming out of the east and pushing up against the bank. And uh, I think I had a Z-Man on or something and captured one, captured a decent redfish up against the bank. We got some pictures that Jeff's going to run in a little bit, but... Uh, we pretty much fished everything. I mean, you caught, I think you caught one inside, right, with the top water? Yeah, yeah, did get one. He had a couple of small blow-ups, but yeah. it was really evident. You know, we were catching them on the, on the uh, uh, twitch baits, caught most of the fish on the twitch bait, and how many fish did we catch that were foul hooked? Top oh, of man. the head, the back, up under here. I mean... And it has to do with, of course, how we work it. But then again, too, because the water's still so stained and and stuff that that these accidental hookups. And I'm telling you, when you foul hook a good sized redfish or a good sized trout, buddy, let me tell you, the the you know he has less resistance against you and his ability to well you can't turn his head yeah i mean we would just it's like it's like snagging a mullet you know uh, in the back with the snatch hook uh, they were really difficult uh to to bring in they were and it was hard to tell how big the fish was because uh there were several of them that were just hooked strange and i mean it was most of the fish we caught were, True. Hooked, were pretty odd well we worked our way um I was fishing the Z-Man uh, and had, a, Paul, had Brown. a Paul Brown on. And I think you had the Skitterwalk, didn't you? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, not Skitterwalk, the Miradine. Well, I had Miradine and Skitterwalk. I mean, you know, I was switching back and forth. But once we got outside of the marsh, I mean, you got to adjust to the conditions. There was so much, because of the wind, there was so much grass, grass yeah, on top of the that. water that, you know, you can't make a decent cast and have a decent retrieve without filling up with, with grass, that it's, it gets frustrating. And that's why people say, that's why I fish live bait. <laughs> you know, but, but, but I, I still you know, go by the fact that we can cover a lot more water with, with artificials. And so uh, throwing that twitch bait in between and you working the Z-Man, uh, popping it off off the bottom, we're able to have enough retrieves that were weed free <laughs> for long enough <laughs> for a long enough time to get enough strikes to to catch uh, a really nice mess of fish yeah we uh you know we'll we'll talk you know in a second about working our way around you know but the the z man i changed colors a couple times the water was dirty i had on more of a root beer green kind of flake in there that really wasn't producing I, I went to the back to the standard white which really shouldn't be the thing that, that works but you know again you you got to keep changing and and the the miradine that you have is that the bone colored one or mm -hmm. a little darker than bone with the with the black and the red you know orange stripe on it was really we didn't bring any this morning was, was really big producer uh and i had a I had a Paul Brown on and then actually switched to a Miradine because of the wind. It was a little bit easier to, uh, uh, you know, it, it was easier to handle with the way the, the way that it was over there. But we, uh, uh, we kind of switched tactics, which uh, we get back from this break. We'll talk about, show you some of the pictures from that. And there's a couple of short videos in there too. So, mm -hmm. um, We'll talk about this cooler weather now and, and, and how things are changing a little bit too. So let's go ahead and uh, take this break. We'll be right back to finish up. Hey, and welcome back. So, you know, we, like I said, we moved around. Uh, we, we went to an area that we, we fished quite a bit and we had the right wind. So... Greg positioned the boat where we had some 
a little bit deeper water to our outside and then the inside and again there was a good tide so you know if, if you're experienced with a suspending bait you can fish it in more shallow water right. and so you know I had the Z-Man teed up and I also had the uh, Paul Brown the Paul Brown teed up and uh, so well, at that point, you were basically working the uh, the Miradine, right? Yeah, after after catching, you know, a couple of fish, yeah. you, know, you go, Ooh, I think I found what works. Yeah. You know, no don't kidding. don't don't change. You know, if it's working, don't fix it. So, so we covered enough water, and uh, mind you, now it's a little cooler today. Yeah. And and this is a week ago, and the water was four or five degrees warmer than it is now. And so uh, we're working this bait fast. Now, you you got to keep changing. But if you were to go out there now, talking about what we're talking about today, you would not work the bait as fast. I mean, it's cool now. The water's five degrees cooler. And so slow it down. It, I mean, very seldom are you going to get working thing, something real, real fast and get a hit on it. I mean, there might be a stray skipjack around. But, you know, keep it, keep that. Slow the bait down now. So, uh, but we just were moving along, and when we got a strike, and we doubled up a couple times. Yep. I put the pole bar, uh, pole down. Power. Power pole. pole down. And so then we, we milked the area, you know. Cast all around. I mean, when you get a couple of strikes, and you are, you know, covering a lot of water, you want to milk that area because in the one particular place where we were, you caught... I caught a, a, a really nice trout and then came back and, and, and on the next cast, you know, and got a, mm -hmm. and got a fish in the very next cast and had, as the way the wind was blowing, had we kept going, I'd have run over him. Yeah, oh, you know, absolutely. I mean, because we were going that way, so well, of course I'm casting with the wind. Pretty fast. And the second time I threw out there, uh, I didn't even get a chance to start working it just about yeah. hit him in the head, you yeah. know. So when you do get a fish, you got the ability to throw the anchor in, put the power bowl down, what do you got to do, whatever you have to do, and go ahead and milk that area first before you move because if you found a spot that's retaining fish, you don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Bill is hooked up. Yeah, I finally, I think one you missed somewhere. Kind of nice. I'm not sure. Got him out there pretty good distance, probably a pretty good trout. That was way out there, downwind. We got the GoPro and we don't even bring it out here and use it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that's most of the trout. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, top of the heat. Hang on. Oh, hold on, there I got him. Oh, <laughs> He's hard to control like man, that. Man, when they're hooked like that, it's hard to <laughs> Sweet. Another little slob, but I think oh, that'll yeah. make dinner, don't you? You bet you. Very nice. I think that'll make good gosh. Yeah, I'd say it was foul, huh? Yep, look at that. Wow. Beauty. Well, you know, the top water w was out. They weren't really, you know, the Z-Man, I, 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 I caught that one redfish, but with the wave action, what wind wave action that we had with the dirty water, you had to put something in the water. You had to put some action in the water. I mean, you, you had to draw their attention. And that's what the, the jerk baits, the suspending baits were doing for us, working them that fast. And then, you know, a little more flashy with the Miradine, you know, which outfished, you know, what I had. But, you know, we were catching quality trout. We didn't catch that many small trout. So, you know, we had one a little over 19 that I got. You had one at, what, 18 and a half. Mm -hmm. We had three or four, about 17. These were big, fat, well-fed trout 
that, uh, and like I said, even at that, with that combination of things, a lot of them were foul hooked, like you were saying, because they just, they're not seeing that well with it, with it dark like that. So as long as you're fishing in this dark water, put some flash out there and put some action to it. And, you know, again, you, it's a little cooler. You may have to slow it down some now, but these suspending baits are really, really producing fish. Now we did work our way up where there were some entrances and I'm going ahead and bring this up because it's going to be brought up <laughs> sooner or later. And we got a little bit closer where water was still flowing pretty hard back into the marshes and I had thrown the Z-Man up there and, and had what I felt like was a fish picking it up and I missed it. And I threw it further into across the corner and again, it's like I was almost hung up and I tightened up on it. Well, it started running at me and I said, you know, Greg, I said, I don't know what I've got here. This feels strange. And he goes, oh, I bet it's a flounder. And I thought, well, you know, that, that may be true. Well, he ran from out of there and he got where you could see the bottom in about a foot and a half of water. And I go, oh, no. I said, it, it, you know, it is. And it was, you know, he was only about that big. Yeah. No, he was about that big. He had a big flounder. And by the time, you know, I never got the flounder hook set on him. Okay. And I think he was just holding on to that Z-Man because it was soft, you know. Yep. We lost him. I lost him. Never got him to the boat. But, uh, all right, listen, we've run out of time again. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Do something good for somebody, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.